Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And it's that time of year. Here we are in August already, but I'm sure you've been out there avoiding the orange barrels and construction signs. And today we're very pleased to have as our guest, Roger Lanning, the Highway Commissioner for Sheboygan County. Today, Roger's gonna talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the County Highway Department and give you a sense of what's been going on this year and some of the projects in the future. Roger, why don't you start by telling our viewers a little bit about, the, about your background and your position as Highway Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Um, I've been an employee with Sheboygan County since 1979 in the uh, County Surveyor's position, Highway Engineer's position originally. And then uh, starting in January of 1987, I uh, assumed the role of a Highway Commissioner for the county and of course have been active in that role since that time. And primary roles, responsibilities of the of the highway department. Well, basically, the primary roles of the highway department are to ma maintain, design, and construct the the, the county uh, system of highways, the the uh, uh, the the lettered system of highways, versus the state with the numerical numbers, uh, 43, 23, 28, and of course the the local roads have individual road names. Now I know some of our viewers may have seen recently an article in the Journal Sentinel talking about how Wisconsin has more paved roads or is up there in the, in the top rankings of the number mm -hmm. of paved roads we have here and you certainly have a great deal of responsibility in the county. About how many miles of county roads do we have here? Well, we have 452 miles of county roads. Uh, total in the county is uh, just short of 1,500 miles. So. Um, of all of the roadways that we, we maintain in the county between the state, ourselves, and our local municipalities amounts to just about 1,100 miles or approximately 75% of the roadways in the county are maintained by the county highway department. So, so restate those numbers for us, 450? 450, 452 miles of county, county trunks. County trunk, and then mm -hmm. when you look at all the town roads and state roads? Town roads, state roads it adds up to a total of about 1,500 miles. I'll be darn. Now, a lot of responsibility, especially the maintenance and upkeep, not only of the roads, but the plowing in the winter. What's the size of your department, your, your employee structure, and how are you organized? Okay, employee-wise, we have 120 uh, full-time employees. And uh, as many of the viewers uh, will note, our operation is divided up into uh, six, what we call district garages. Uh, for example, in Plymouth and Cascade, Adel, uh, Elkhart Lake, Howard's Grove, and of course, uh, south of Sheboygan on I-43. And during the winter time, each of the, uh, the garages there maintains about 200 miles of roadway in that specific area. And then of course, during the summertime, it, it, we break out into the various uh, construction crews. And I might add that the administration building and our uh, a machinery repair facility is at uh, on 23rd Street in, here in Sheboygan. So not only responsible for maintaining all these roads, but I know you're also busy with culverts, bridges, signage. Could you touch on that a little bit? That's correct. That's all part of the, the maintenance of the roadways. I, um, I guess maintenance I would classify as a resurfacing or sealing of the roadways, um, <clears throat> excuse me, mowing the grass, uh, litter pickup, and as mentioned, signing and culverts and all other drainage facilities. Is that an activity that is seasonal? Can you give our viewers a, a flavor of, you know, as the year progresses, where are your crews focused? Well, of course, during the, during the summer months, all of the crews are focused on, the, uh, on that type of maintenance uh, that I just mentioned versus the winter time. We, we go as long as we can until the snow starts, uh, starts coming. And then we have to mobilize our, our, of course, our, our equipment for the snow plowing activities, standing and salting. And what hours do the crews generally work? Normal work hours uh, are 7 to 3.30. During the summer months, because of the daylight hours, we work uh, um, 6 to 4, Monday through Thursday. And as necessary on Fridays, uh, some of the various crews will work on Fridays. Very good. Thank you, Roger. Roger, in addition to being county board chairman, I'm also chairman of the town of Sherman and I know that you do a lot of coordination and work with townships. Could you tell us a little bit about that type of coordination? Sure. Um, historically, 
uh, in this county, the townships have, have always worked with the county highway department when it came to uh, maintaining uh, and up, upkeep of their, their, their town roads, for example. Um, that's why, quite frankly, why our force is as, as large as it is, is to maintain uh, the, the township roads. Currently, we maintain uh, you know, 12 out of the 15 townships, uh, their roadways, uh, you know, during the winter, and then of course during the summer maintenance and construction construction season, we do we try to do as much of that uh, of that construction work as we can with the township. So, uh, we have a very good relationship with with the municipalities in the county, to uh, because we've done the work in the past, and we, we certainly, uh, with that amount of work, helps us to be cost effective in in our overall operation. Can you talk about some of the projects that you've been working on lately with local units of government? Sure. Well, in, a, in addition to uh, many of the resurfacing jobs that we, that we uh, do for the townships and the normal, as you mentioned, culverts and whatnot, um, primarily, let me focus on, if I may, in the county roads this year as far as the actual construction. Uh, county Highway O on the south side of Chicago Memorial Airport uh, that was what I call relocated or shifted south uh, from its present location to accommodate future expansion of uh, the main runway out of the airport. The grading and graveling is done with that, and we hope to be uh, complete with the asphalt and the signing and have everything opened up by the end of August. Uh, the, the job that we started a couple weeks ago, another grading job, is County Highway A from uh, V known as Six Corners, northeasterly to Whedon Creek. That's about a mile and three quarters with, with a total regrading re of that, a total, you know, ditches, roadbed, asphalt. And we hope to be completed with that by the end of September. And then we have some other what we call betterment jobs in a, for a couple of the townships whereby we basically leave the existing pavement in place but but basically re-ditch and, and and work on the culverts on 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 a length of roadway basically it's all rebuilt except the roadbed itself and a number of the townships uh, have some jobs lined up with us uh, to do that work okay great any state and other local projects that you've been getting involved in as far as the uh, construction is concerned um, <clears throat> the the we are in the in in what would they call District Three, the Green Bay District, of the of the State Highway Department, and any major jobs, major construction jobs, for example, if there's a major construction I-43, or the reconstruction of 57, uh, basically from Waldo to the South Carolina and in, into Ozaki County, those major construction jobs are handled by the DOT under lead contracts. That's all run through the Green Bay and of course the central office in in Madison. The other maintenance activities, the, the grass mowing, uh, uh, culvert repair, and uh, seal coating, things like that, are considered part of maintenance. And, uh, and, and we, we have, each year we work with the state setting up a program on their roadways for that type of work. Keep in mind that Wisconsin is uh, unique in the nation as far as the counties having to do, that do the maintenance on the state highway systems. Any uh, projects coming down the road next year that you're looking at? Well, first of all, on, on the county projects, um, we will be rebuilding County Road P and, and a portion of A southwest of Elkhart Lake. That's a little over two miles of roadway. We'll be working on, on regrading on that. Um, we have some, have some work at the, at the airport next year once again. And uh, a bridge is scheduled for reconstruction next year on County Road O over the Sheboygan River that's west of the airport a couple miles. And then uh, once again we'll have a number of projects lined up with the local municipalities. From the state of Wisconsin standpoint what I, I've learned of their construction plans are um, many of uh, us have been involved with or heard of the extension of State Highway 23 on the north side of Plymouth where, where the, currently where the four lanes end right now that that's going to be extended to the west to bypass Plymouth about oh, it's about two miles of roadway and some of the structure work the bridges overheads will, will start next next year the state will be letting a contract on that and then in the village of Cedar Grove on State Highway 32 uh, from uh, 
from County Road D north to the North Village limits in Cedar Grove, that's going to be uh, reconstructed starting early next year also. And then of course after that, the state has long range plans for reconstruction of Highway 28 from 57 uh, th through Waldo, through Cascade, and down to the south uh, uh, Sheboygan County line. That's, that's not going to be a full reconstruction, but a resurfacing and upgrading of the facility. Uh, as well as the same type of job will be on State Highway 32 then from the North Village limits of Cedar Grove to Sheboygan Falls. So there's quite a bit of work going to be going on. You do an awful lot of work within the county. Probably the viewers would be interested in how things are funded. Basically, how do we fund your department? Is it totally on the tax roll or? No. Um, I, the easiest way to sum up is that we, we get our primary funding from three sources, of course. The, uh, our, our state and federal aid programs, which include the, the what we call gas, the, you know, the gas tax that we pay, part of that comes back to the local units of government. Uh, so about a, a third of our budget comes from, comes from the state in the form of, of, of the gas tax and other uh, aid programs like that. The other third of our budget comes with our contractual arrangements with the State Department of Transportation and the local units of government. And then the, basically the, the, another third is from the tax levy. Okay. How do things look in next year's budget based upon cutbacks, both from the federal and state level? It seems that the state government wants to spend a lot of money on road building. Does that still filter down to the county or not? No. <laughs> the, uh, of course, we've all read about uh, the road building part of it, but, but quite frankly, from the state budget, from the state transportation budget, uh, only about 10% of the total dollars that they take in is, is funneled into major construction. But uh, um, the work that we do, we we'll call it the maintenance aspect of, the, uh, of maintaining the state roadways, uh, the way it sounds that uh, those funding levels are, are going to uh, stay the same as what they have been the last year or two. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then from, from the county aspect, of course, we, you know, we talk and hear all of the, of the, uh, of the levy caps, the levy limits, what we're going to have to deal with. And of course, at the highway department, with our county budget, where we've been uh, asked to come up with 3.7%, uh, we will achieve that goal in basically all areas of our operation, labor, our direct operations uh, in our materials and programs and and from the capital expenditure side for for uh, equipment so I guess I wanted each area of, of the highway department to budget of the budget to feel some of the pain okay. okay thank you focusing on the funding a little bit you mentioned state and federal resources about a third and then working with the local units of government mm -hmm. and the, the contracts that you receive and then the other third is levy What's the total highway department budget? 12.4 million. 12.4 million. As you alluded to, every department's been challenged to hit this 3.7 percent reduction to help us be successful for 2004 to address the revenue constraints we have, what have you. What's your overall sense in regards to what's happening at the state level and the change in priorities? And as you said, often when you hear about these increases for Milwaukee or other areas mm -hmm. on state highways, it doesn't necessarily mean increases for county and county highways. Um, how are we going to continue to provide the maintenance and the snow removal when we're seeing these continued reductions in revenue? It's, it boils down ultimately to some type of level of service. Now, keep in mind that let's just use snow plowing, for example. Um, I'm not so sure we can necessarily can cut back on the level of ser service of, of, of our plowing or sanding and salting because of the need of the people to get to and from work, fr quite frankly, the safety of the roadways. That, that has to be paramount. So um, you ultimately have to f feel the, the pinch in your maintenance and construction of the, of the roadways facilities, and that's where uh, with the increase in, in, in material costs and our different road oils and gravels and whatnot, and the increase in any of the labor that we have to deal with. And if you have a zero increase or, or cuts, it, it has to come out of programs, uh, ultimately. As many of our viewers, I'm sure, are aware, the county's worked real hard 
the last few four years to maintain our tax rate and and now with the additional cuts from the crisis at the state level chairman Gehring and the finance committee have established targets and direction for the county as a whole with these reductions and I think from our viewer standpoint as you said the level of expectation is pretty high I personally I know when I've had friends visit me and some of them like to ride their bikes a lot and are in triathlons things like that and they've often said to me wow our county roads are top-notch which is certainly a reflection on you and your staff I know they're working hard and they're making good things happen but if we only have so much revenue to work with and 23 other departments to balance those needs people's expectations may have to change a little bit whether it's it's snow removal or whether it's maintenance and brush removal and that's that's true and that's true and a lot of times from from a person's perspective even in our home budgets if if we're tight sometimes the first thing we cut back on is maybe the maintenance of things or, or, or the upkeep you you just stay with the essentials so to speak and in many cases uh, the maintenance items are the one are the easiest target somewhat because you don't see the immediate ramifications of those cuts right right well speaking of snow <laughs> though we're taping this in August it won't be too long and you're going to be changing over a lot of your equipment and, and gearing up for snow removal why don't you give our viewers a, a sense a little bit of what it takes to gear up for plowing snow and, and salting our roads every winter well, it's definitely a challenge when we make the transition from construction to snow because we try and push the construction season as long as we can if the weather stays good and then uh, and hope that it doesn't snow too early so that you don't have the trucks uh, hooked up with the plows and whatnot so it becomes a guessing game a little bit but uh, usually the end of October we, we want to start you know mounting some of the snow equipment on, on the equipment and make that transition from example the trucks that haul gravel and asphalt during the summer have to have plows put on them and 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 get ready and plows and sanders and things to to get ready for the snow removal season how many plows do you have available to you at any one time well the, the best answer to that is on on call it atypical s snowfall if there is such a thing uh, and if it falls nice so you can get it all cleaned up in that eight, eight hour day, uh, we, we would uh, say an inch and a half, two inch snowfall would, would have uh, 40 units out. Okay. Uh, 40 units and, and for, for an eight hour day with those uh, 40 units out amounts to about $20,000. I'll be darned. And that doesn't take into consideration the wind or the change in the, change in the wind direction or the, the, any overtime. So every time there's an inch and a half of snow we're looking at roughly twenty thousand dollars to, to yes. clear off the streets and from a public again public expectation standpoint I imagine when there's a half inch of snow you're starting to get calls already and people are wondering when things are going to get cleaned up well you're right and then <clears throat> it's it's interesting that you note that is that Sheboygan County uh, being closer to Milwaukee and we've all seen I call it a migration of folks uh, moving into our area and 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 therefore commuting back to in the Milwaukee area has created more of a demand for for bare roads because Milwaukee County with the freeway system doesn't have a place to push the snow so they basically have to melt it all and it carries into Ozaukee and then ultimately in, into Sheboygan so we, we have a fair amount of pressure to keep the keep the roads I hate to use the term bare but uh, close to it so that people have and uh, have the ability to get to work on time and safely. Bill was talking a little bit about the importance of working with the towns and other local units of government and the collaboration and I know that Bill has really been emphasizing shared services and working co collaboratively with other local mm -hmm. units of government. What's what's at stake here? I mean I know you have a good rapport and relationship with the towns, you coordinate activities, you do some of their road work but not all of it. What's really at stake here if we didn't have that collab collaboration? Well, if, it, if we didn't have the co collaboration, I, I guess, uh, let me approach it from the standpoint of, of, of simply volume of work. Uh, it's, it's very simple that when you're geared up to do work, that the more volume of work that you do, the, the lower the unit costs are, are going to be. So, for example, the more 
uh, gravel we can produce or asphalt which can be produced and laid. That, the more volume we do, of course, lowers our unit costs. And, and to have the relationship with the local units of government and uh, working uh, with them to, uh, to procure that work not only uh, helps, uh, well, it, it simply helps all the taxpayers that, that if we can keep that unit cost low, uh, it helps the, t the town taxpayers and, of course, all of the county taxpayers. And when it comes to snow removal, I imagine you're working with a lot of the towns as well. Yes, like I had mentioned, uh, 12 out of the 15. And if they weren't, then they might likely have their own equipment and their own staffing and, and costs could es escalate. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, uh, our surrounding counties, for example, uh, Washington County and Fond du Lac County, I know the townships in those counties do have their have their own uh, snow, removal, snow removal equipment. So as people are out driving about, whether it's the summer yet and, and wondering about some barrels or wondering about something being worked on or whether it's our county highway department actually doing the work or someone who's bid out for it in the private sector or at the state level or this winter when certainly I'm sure you're going to receive calls about <laughs> when a road's going to be plowed, uh, who do they call? How do they get more information? One thing that's worked well for us, and I'd, I'd like to put a plug in for it, is of course our, our county website. And on the county website, we, we, we have like the state DOT uh, numbers that they can call for, for statewide uh, highway condition uh, uh, forecast or, or, uh, and what's going on around the state. As well as, of course, they can call our administrative, uh, administrative office on, uh, on 23rd Street, the Sheriff's Department, or quite frankly, any of our outlying district garages, which I mentioned. Very good. And we had you on, I don't know, it's been some time, but I know it was more during the winter months. And one of the things we asked you is any tips you have for our viewers when they're out there driving in these conditions to, to help with everyone's safety, including our staff? Simply speed. Um, I guess my best recommendation is, is, you know, if you're going to work, leave a little early to, earlier to allow yourself some time to have to have to slow down or or deal with some our our snow equipment uh, out on the roadway or simply if it's the conditions you're going to run into uh, because it the variation in snowfalls and conditions in the county from west to east and north to south um, varies a tremendous amount and uh, and of course leave a little early and try not to drive. 65 or 55 just because the sign says so. <laughs> and, and if there are questions or concerns, another level that's out there that people can contact are actually members of the Transportation Committee themselves. That's, that's correct, yes. And that's correct. You want to just briefly touch on who participates on that committee? Sure. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Adam. Thank sure. you. Our, of course, our Transportation Committee uh, has oversight of the Highway Committee as well as the, uh, the county airport. Uh, the chairman of the committee is, is Richard Bemis, the vice chairman is Gerald Holub, the secretary is Charles Conrardi, and Harold Locke and Harold Reamer are also the two supervisors that make up the five-member uh, transportation committee. Very good. Well, we want to thank you very much for joining us today, and it's certainly a pleasure to have Roger Lanning with us. The last five years that I've had the opportunity to work with Roger, uh, I know how dedicated he is, how thorough he is, and certainly how committed he is to providing the best service he can, not only himself, but he has an excellent, excellent staff and an excellent working relationship with the other departments. He mentioned the airport earlier. If you haven't had a chance, and I know we've had Chuck on the program recently, but if you haven't had a chance, stop out at the airport, not only to take a look at the work that the highway department crew is doing, but the improvements we're making there to the infrastructure. It's good for our economy, it's good for people in the community, and it's really pretty impressive to take a look at. So thanks again, Roger, for being our guest today. You're welcome. Next month, we're going to have our finance director, Tim Finch, join us. As you know, there have been a lot of discussions about the state budget, $3.2 billion shortfall, and discussions of a possibility of a property tax freeze or cap uh, discussions locally as to what's going to happen with the different programs and services we provide. Chairman Gehring, the Finance Committee, all the County Board Supervisors, all the department heads are presently developing their budgets, scrutinizing their budgets, and determining where we're going to make costs to live, in, to live within the means, to live within the revenue that we're receiving from the state. And when you think about this state 
budget shortfall, believe me, it's coming home to roost and it's going to affect programs locally. And certainly stay in touch. We need your input. And next month, Tim Finch will be joining us to share a little bit about where we're at and where we're headed. So until then, on behalf of the County Board, County Board Chairman Bill Gehring and myself, Adam Payne, thank you for joining us today. Thank <laughs> you.